Hey and welcome, I'm Hammy and guess what, we are going to Blizzard World, the new level Assault Escort is out on the PTR and there are so many cool easter eggs and references, oh so many references to this level that's basically a big tribute to Starcraft, Warcraft and Diablo and Blizzard's other universes and stories. So hold on to your hats as I'm going to take you through every single reference that I can spot and if I do miss any and I hope it's very very few, do let me know in the comments below. There are so many little easter eggs in here. It's amazing. Okay, first up we start in the Hearthstone Tavern at the Attacker's Spawn and there are references straight out of the gate to for World of Warcraft. The Dark Moon Ferris Wheel refers to the Dark Moon Fair, a recurring World of Warcraft event where you can effectively go to a fair, do various things there for reputation, and there were also these cards that you could use to make trinkets for your character that improved your character's gear and item level. Blackrock Mountain will need no introduction for Warcraft fans or players. Hearthstone players may know it as an expansion and adventure that the Hearthstone game had and in the Warcraft universe it has been home to the Dark Iron Dwarves, to Blackwing Glare, to Molten Core, some big 40-man vanilla World of Warcraft raids like absolutely ages ago, and of course the big bosses Ragnaros and Nefarian amongst other things. In the Hearthstone Tavern there are plenty of games of Hearthstone going on. The board that they're playing on is actually one of the boards from the game, it is the Stormwind board, and everyone seems to be playing Murlocs for some reason. If you listen carefully to the Hearthstone boards they do play the Hearthstone victory sound when someone wins a game once every so often as well. The sound Sound detail in this map is exceptional and I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit. Before we leave the Hearthstone Tavern you can't not mention this map. Now this is jammed full of not only the playable piece of the level but some just references to the rest of the park outside. What I will do is go through the playable references, the things we can see within the playable piece of the level, then I'll come back to this map at the end and explain the references around the outside of the water area in the middle as well because there are loads and loads of cool references to all sorts of things. So. Hold your thoughts on this, we'll come back to anything that you're missing on this on the outside at the end of the vid. Now, before we leave the Hearthstone Tavern, I have to mention the voiceover of this map, which is awesome. Each area has its own voiceover, and in this area, the Warcraft and the Hearthstone area, it's Uther. Now, Uther the Lightbringer was a paladin in the Warcraft world. He was very, very famous, and he was betrayed and murdered by his beloved pupil, Prince Arthas, who would eventually become an incarnation of the Lich King. Now the announcers in the maps have some really funny things that they say and references in and of themselves. So what I'm going to do is split that out to a separate video when I can get the clean sound effects. So keep an eye out for that on the channel in the coming days, maybe week or so. While you wait, different objects and areas of the map have triggers for sounds. Try walking around the turnstile gates in the Hearthstone Inn and around the food serving area in this inn as well and you'll hear different things trigger if you want to hear a bit of Uther. Okay, coming out of the tavern we are immediately into the Stormwind or Warcraft themed area of the park. More posters give us more fun little references. The spawning pool is a Zerg structure in Starcraft that Zerg players have to build so that they can build units. Here we can see a happy little family there sitting there and also Zinyata in the bottom right hand corner as well. On the other side we have the Hell Scream, a ride clearly themed after Gromash Hell Scream a very, very feared leader and war chief of the Horde in the Warcraft universe. I've actually done a lore interactions and voice lines video on him from Heroes of the Storm. Click down below in the description if you're interested, links in there. Next to the poster of Gromash is the Wizard's Sanctum Magic Show. Now there is an area inside Stormwind in World of Warcraft in the Mage Quarter called the Wizard's Sanctum. In the little curio shop on the right, you can of course stock up on your Blizzard themed merchandise. Now two things here that are quite funny. You've got kind of foam inflatable weapons. One of them is Doomhammer, a weapon passed down from Father to Sun and finally in the possession of Thrall, recently the great orc and elementalist. The other is Ashbringer, up until recently wielded by Tyrion Fordring, you might be familiar with him from Hearthstone if you have never played Warcraft, and then very very recently by the player character if you play a paladin. Before we actually head into the park, this area with the five statues is pretty much a replica of the Gates of Stormwind in World of Warcraft itself, which is absolutely amazing attention to detail. Now, there are four names on these base plates. They're Curden Wildhammer, Dana Trollbane, Khadgar, Archmage of the Kirin Tor, and Illyria Windrunner. And then the final one is General Turalyon. Now, these five are known as the Sons of Lothar. They're a group who went beyond the Dark Portal in the Warcraft universe, and travel between worlds in the events of Warcraft 2, beyond the Dark Portal, the Warcraft real-time strategy game from a while back. Now, these guys all went a bit lost in space, where in the world is Carmen San Diego for a while, but they've all turned up as of World of Warcraft Legion, the recent expansion, and the recent Argus event. Over at the Lost and Found Vikings, not only are the Lost of Vikings an old Blizzard game, which is actually really, really fun, and you can play for free online. I think you can still download it from the Blizzard site someplace. There's actually a reference in the sign itself. These are the John Travolta looking a bit lost meme poses that you may have seen from his character as Vincent Vega in the film Pulp Fiction. 
at the Lost and Found Vikings, as well as sadly a little SCV figure and a Terran Marine figure have been lost, a little bit of merchandise there from the StarCraft universe. There's also a copy of the Green Hills of Stranglethorn. Now for World of Warcraft players, this might be a bit of a sore point. This is actually an in-joke as well to Jeff Kaplan. This is a quest that Jeff worked on or made when he was working on the World of Warcraft team. It was known by players to be slightly long, a little bit painful and arduous. You sometimes needed the auction house and to use your in-game gold to try and buy bits of it. Basically, you had to run around a jungle called Stranglethorn Vale in World of Warcraft, looting things to try and get, I think it was 15 pages in total, um, and then you combine these pages to make chapters that you then handed in to complete the quest. So it was getting the luck of the draw to get those 15 different unique items that you needed. As we go through the actual gate, there are four more really cool posters referring to the rides. Overlord Transport, of course, supply for the swarm. Overlords are a unit that the Zerg use in StarCraft. Now, at StarCraft, you have a cap of the amount of units you can have on the battlefield at one time. To increase that, for each race that you play, you need to build a certain unit or structure. And for the Zerg, it's Overlords. You can also use Overlords in StarCraft to drop and move units around, and you can see a little Overlord transport flying over the middle of this map. Flight to Duskwood is actually a ride in this map, a World of Warcraft reference you saw over Darkshire in World of Warcraft when you're flying typically from the Alliance capital of Stormwind. In the actual ride, there are screenshots of the actual flight over Darkshire, which is really, really cool, and also the Griffins that the Alliance fly on, and there's some custom voice work in there from Uther as well. Two more posters, Journey to Aya Retake Your Homeworld, a StarCraft reference to the Protoss race. In the events of the StarCraft II latter half of the trilogy, the Protoss try and retake their homeworld that has been taken from them by the Zerg earlier in the events of StarCraft and StarCraft Brood War. A nice little Easter egg nod there in Preserver Vision VR. Now, Preservers were a very small part of the Kalai Protoss, who were kind of memory preservers. They held the memories of other people who used the Kala, the shared sonic link that the Kali Protoss use. Finally, we have Murloc Island and dive into adventure at Stone Cairn Lake. Now, Stone Cairn Lake is in Elwyn Forest, the human starting area in World of Warcraft. And in that lake, there is a particular island that's been taken over by Murlocs. So again, for any World of Warcraft player who's played humans, they'll totally recognize this. Over on the right side of the door, you can see 131. Now, apparently, according to interviews that Blizzard did at BlizzCon, this is a reference to the the old door number of the first Blizzard company or office. Now, Uther actually has custom voice work if you try and walk up to this door, so try it and hear what he says. In the Warcraft area, outside a lot of the buildings, there are mailboxes that you can see outside of Inns and World of Warcraft, where you go to get your items and in-game post. Also, have a look at the little Blizzard signs. One saying there is no cow level is a reference to an ongoing Blizzard joke. In the original Diablo, a myth spread that by clicking the body of a particular cow, you could open a different level. Blizzard rejected this, it wasn't true, but they then put there is no cow level as a cheat code in StarCraft that would let you just win the level you were on. There was then an actual cow level introduced in Diablo 2. There wasn't in Diablo 3, but they made a level called Whimsy Shire, which was a big, funny, different level as well. And in the recent Diablo anniversary, there was a event for cow level added to World of Warcraft, where you could go through and get a particular instrument that would play some of the Diablo music. Last but not least, you'll see a few little blue signs around saying play nice, play fair. Now this is part of the Blizzard Company ethos, the Blizzard Company motto, as it were. The Fargo Deep Mine, again, is another area close to the human starting area, which has co Kobolds in, you can see the candles at the back here. You know take candle, kobolds are very, very fond of their candles, and this has become a bit of an ingrown blizzard, and certainly Hearthstone and Warcraft joke as well. Snaxramus, well, Naxxramus will be familiar to Hearthstone players, even if they haven't played Warcraft, but it is the floating dread citadel of one of the previous Lich King's most erstwhile lieutenants, Kel'Thuzad. Here, as well as getting Murloc Ice Pops, you can also get Death Wings, probably a hint to this certain rather large dragon of the Warcraft world as well. Okay, we're almost done with the first area, but before we move on, this area where you pick up the payload and capture the first point is meant to look like Booty Bay out of the world of Warcraft, a slightly piratey area on one of the continents there. Looking out across the harbour, you can see some of the things we've mentioned already on the map. The Orange Balloon is apparently a tourist attraction that you can do in Irvine, California, where Blizzard are based, and you can also see on the right there the shape of the right Tyrael's Fall. Now, Tyrael is an angel in the Diablo universe. He came to blows with one of his fellow angels and tore off his wings, deliberately choosing to become immortal in the events of Diablo 3 so that he could try and help humanity. He fell to the world of Sanctuary as the falling star of that game, smashing into the Tristram Cathedral. So that's why he has a bit of a drop right here. What I think is Peace Bloom, a herb in World of Warcraft that you have to pick to level up your herbalism skill, is also quite a lot around this Warcraft area. And finally for Area 1, keep an eye on the payload when it actually comes out. Apparently, according to interviews at BlizzCon, it could change between different objects. Now, the one that I've seen is Lyoric's Crown, 
something that you put on him in Diablo 3 to activate the boss, but it could be other objects from other games as well. Okay, into the StarCraft section of the map. Now I'm going to go through the buildings to start with before going into the little details afterwards. On the left we have a refinery used by the Terran race or a Terran player to get gas that you need as one of your two resources in StarCraft. Next to it we have a siege tank, a very powerful Terran ground unit. Next to that we have a pylon, that is the Protoss equivalent of the Overlord. You need pylons to have additional capacity to build units and they also power buildings. Finally you have the Nexus experience. Now the Protoss Nexus is the equivalent of a Terran command center or a Zerg hatchery. They're the building you start with, they produce all of your worker units. Think of them as your base, although you can build more of them. If you lose all of the ones you have on the map you're probably in trouble unless you've already defeated your opponent. The little drones flying around are Protoss probes. These are the Protoss's worker bee units that mine resources and build buildings. Now there's a really nice little reference even in the movement of the probes. These four Protoss probes moving in a line as soon as you start a StarCraft game, sometimes as the Protoss, all of the units will just travel in a line before splitting out and going on their own paths. So that's a little reference to starting a game of StarCraft as Protoss in itself. At the Pylon Terrace Cafe, not only can you get Protoss Nexus style shaped waffles, but you can also get Ravager Dogs with Stimpak Soda, Stimpaks being a Terran upgrade and Ravagers being a unit. You can also get Frozen Pops that are in Mineral, Vespine and Creepsicle flavours for the different resources as well as Zerg Creep. Now these are all from the voiceover who's the adjutant. In StarCraft she's the voiceover of some of the UI and some of the call outs, some of the commentary in game. You can trigger a lot of her lines by running around in the Nexus experience and the cafe. A lot of stuff here makes the noises that it actually makes in the StarCraft games like the probes and over in the Nexus experience you can see a lot of cool StarCraft merchandise including Zerglings, Marines and SCVs. Inside the Nexus experience there's a Heroes of the Storm arcade. This does actually play the Heroes of the Storm intro music which is really cool and some of the games are pretty funny as well. Asthma Dunk is a reference to an Asmodan basketball skin in Heroes of the Storm. This game actually works. If you get one of the balls through the hoop then it will show a shower of confetti and if you have a look at the scoreboard then it seems that some people we know might have been here. Sombra has hacked the scoreboard and she's got 9999. Diva saying no one's beating my high score as well. Someone has beaten her high score. I'm not sure about JRT, should that be Junkrat? And I'm guessing maybe Soldier 76 has come in fourth there. Last but not least, we go into Reign of the Black King. Now this is the Diablo themed area. Reign of the Black King is literally the name of a quest from Diablo 3, where you venture into Tristram Cathedral to end the reign of Leoric the Skeleton King. The voice over here is Deckard Kane. He's a Haradric scholar in the universe, versed in a history of the arcane and obscure lore. You may know him for his infamous stay a while and listen line. He has a load of cool voice lines which I'll cover in the future video, but try walking near the books that seem to be writing themselves. If Torbjorn walks in here, apparently the voiceover will say that he's not tall enough to ride the attractions, and if you destroy some of the barrels around this section of the level, you might hear a legendary item drop sound now and then from Diablo. The building itself is meant to be Tristram Cathedral, which was the setting of pretty much most of the first Diablo game and various bits of Diablo 3, including when you have the boss battle against Leoric. Leoric also features in Heroes of the Storm. He used to be the ruling monarch of Kandurus, the area in which Tristram is based. He was corrupted by Diablo, descended into madness, was slain by his own lieutenant in order to prevent further bloodshed, and then brought back to undeath life by Diablo as the Skeleton King. Now you fight him in Diablo 1 and also in Diablo 3. The throne that you see at the end of Blizzard World is his throne, and this is the fight that you see in Diablo as shown here. That's the map tour. Last but not least, let's go back to those other bits we saw on the map at the beginning, as well as general little easter eggs. You can shoot the probes out the sky, you can open treasure chests, you can interact with the little balloons, there are loads of movable objects, and so many little things to play with as well. Okay, back to the map. Well, Escape from the Stockade, that is a prison dungeon set in the middle of Stormwind City in World of Warcraft, common I think for the level 20 to 30 style players to run. The auction house gift shop, well in World of Warcraft the auction house is where you can buy and sell things, it's the place where the player economy works. Pestle's Apocathry is actually the name of the Apocathry shop as I've shown here in Stormwind. So again that's straight from World of Warcraft as well. I've already shown you the poster for the Spawning Pools water park from Starcraft. The Nidus Worm slide is another Zerg reference from Starcraft. A Nidus Worm is a Zerg structure that lets you move units very quickly around the map. Zagara can also make them in Heroes of the Storm, letting you invade and move around very quickly. The Hatchery Petting Zoo, well the Zerg Hatchery is the main base building that produces worker units like the Protoss Nexus or the Terran Command Center. 
the slaughtered calf inn that we see in the top right is kind of a Diablo themed area. This is an inn from Diablo. It's in Tristram in Act 1 of Diablo 3. Chaldean Market, again from Diablo 3, it's the main marketplace in the desert area of the world that you go to in one of the middle acts of the game. Shen's Delights, another Diablo reference. Shen's Delight was a legendary gem in Diablo 3 that was cut from the game. You use gems to improve your gear. Now, covetous Shen, the character himself, provides you with dual crafting services after you rescue him from a barrel in the Chaldean sewers. New Tristram is the starting zone and area of Diablo 3 first act. We've already had a talk about Tyrael's Fall. And the Den of Evil is the first quest I believe that you do in Diablo 2. Now as I said before, in Diablo 3 the Reign of the Black King quest is below Tristram Cathedral. It's mentioned here again. Uh, Lyric does have his own mana in Diablo as well. Command Center liftoff is referring to Terran command centers in Starcraft being able to take off and land. In fact, most Terran buildings apart from supply depots and base defense structures can. A few bits here we didn't cover with posters at the beginning. Gates of Orgrimmar or Siege of Orgrimmar. Well, Siege of Orgrimmar was a raid in World of Warcraft and the Gates of Orgrimmar are referring to the capital city of the Horde. In World of Warcraft, before you can fly or have a mount, very often you get around by the use of Zeppelins or Windriders. And Zeppelin landing is where you'd wait to get a Zeppelin from one continent to another. Another couple of pieces as we come to the left side of the map. Well, a Moonwell is a night elf magical source of water and power effectively in the Warcraft universe. Kadga's herbs, well, there's a mage in World of Warcraft, a famous character called Kadga, and there's a herb called Kadga's Whisker. Blackheart's Revenge is a Heroes of the Storm reference. On his map, you have to collect coins and pay for him to shell your enemy's forts. That's actually also the name of a brawl in Heroes of the Storm. Okay, I think that's just about everything. Now, I'm sure I've missed something small, so if I have, please let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please do throw a like, comment with what your favorite references are. Are you interested maybe in exploring these games if you haven't already? And if you've played these games already, what do you think of these little references? I love this map. There's so much detail and love that's gone into it. So thank you, Blizzard, for making it. And keep an eye out for the voice lines of this map that I'm going to get together as soon as I can get the clean files or make a nice version of them. If you want to see more Overwatch lore, map tours, voice lines, interactions, news, anything to do with the story of the game, please check out these playlists below and throw my channel a sub if you enjoyed. Big thanks to my patrons on Patreon, they make these longer videos possible. If you'd like to see how you can support from just a dollar, pound, euro or single unit of your currency a month that you can cancel any time, it helps me make more videos for you, check out the link here. Cheers for tuning in, I've been Hammy, take it easy.